Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from the Gospel, which was read earlier. We listen again to these words. And he said to them, Why are you fearful? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with a great fear. And they said to one another, Who is this then, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, a renowned artist by the name of Paul Gustav Dorr, who lived in the 19th century, was traveling through Europe one day when he found out that he had lost his passport. He hoped that he would just go to the next border and they would recognize who he was because he was such a famous person, a famous painter and artist, that they would recognize him and let him through. So when he got to the border, he told the guard exactly who he was, that he was a renowned artist, Paul Gustav Dorr. And the guard looked at him and said, well, you do know many people come to the border and tell us that they are who they are not, just so they can get across. I am not letting you cross the border because you have no passport. Mr. Dorr did not know exactly what to do, but the guard did. He told the artist, he said, we're going to give you a test. They handed Paul a piece of paper and a pencil. And then they pointed to some peasants who were by the wall. And the guard told the artist, now, we want you to draw them quickly. So Mr. Doerr got his pencil and the paper and quickly and gracefully drew those and handed it back to the guard. And the guard looked at it and said, you must be Mr. Door. You can pass. For your words have been backed up by your actions. Your identity is true because of what you have done. This morning, we hear in the gospel about Jesus. And who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. The disciples understand who he is, not only because of his word, but because of his actions. For Jesus is asleep in the boat, and the storm comes up. The disciples are fearful, fearful for their lives. They wake Jesus up, and what does Jesus do? But he calms the storm just by simple words, peace be still. And just with those words, the wind died down and there was a great calm. For Jesus shows his disciples and he also shows us that he is the Lord of creation. For it's through his almighty word that things came into existence. It's through his almighty word that he created the earth the heavens, you and me and everything there possibly is here. He is the Lord of creation, is he not? The king of England in the 10th century, King Canute, he wanted to establish this to his people. And he did this not just by word of mouth. What King Canute did is he took his throne and set it on the beaches of the shore, on the shoreline. And then from that throne, he sat upon it, and he gave the command to the sea. He said, you shall not come into my territory, nor shall the tide come and touch the hem of my robe. But then the tide came in, and King Canute showed his people exactly who was Lord of all creation. The king said these words, Let all earth's inhabitants know that the power of kings is vain and frivolous. Not his only 
the king worthy of the name except him by whose command heaven and earth and sea obey. What a powerful lesson. And then at that, the king Canute took off the crown from his head and placed it on a crucifix of Jesus upon a cross, showing who truly was the king of all creation. We must always recognize who we are and who Jesus is. Not just the man who walked upon this earth over 2,000 years ago, we must recognize him as our Lord, as the one who made the heavens and the earth, the Lord of creation. And then at that, he is the Lord to be feared. For he is the one who created us, and he is the one who sustains us. And he is the one whom we should fear. I think it's an interesting story about the 23rd president of the United States. You may not even know, even know who the President of the United States was, the 23rd one. I actually had to look it up. It was Benjamin Harrison. The thing is about Benjamin Harrison, he had a fear. Because during his term in the office of the White House is when they installed electricity. And he and his wife, Carolyn, were afraid of the electricity. As a matter of fact, they would not touch the electrical switches. If all of their maidservants and manservants in the White House would leave for the day, they would sleep with the lights on because they would not touch them. They were fearful of electricity. It's really a story for us as well, an illustration for us to live by. Now, I'm not saying leave all your lights on at home or don't touch them. What I'm saying is this. We must be fearful of the one who created us in respect and in awe because he is the one who commands the sea and the waves and the wind that they would be calm. He is the Lord to be feared. As well the disciples did fear, not just they feared the Lord, but they feared for their lives. And the fear which I am describing to you this morning is not necessarily the fear for our lives, but even more so the fact that we should respect and honor and be in awe of our God, especially because he is the Lord of our salvation. He is the one who came to this world to take upon our sins, upon himself, to go to the cross, to pay our penalty, the death which we deserved, he received. His hands and his feet were nailed to that cross for you and for me in death, in agony, in pain, in suffering. He died for us that we have life. There's a commentator who once said concerning this text of ours, he compared Jesus He said, Jonah is one who slept through a storm on a boat. In the same way, Jesus slept on a boat in a storm. He went on to say that Jonah is also one who calmed the storm. Of course, he did it by sacrifice, by being thrown into the sea. And then Jesus also calmed the storm by just simply speaking the words, peace, be still. But then Jesus did the ultimate. Very much like Jonah, but Jesus himself gave up his life upon the cross, taking our sins with him, that God sees us no longer as sinful, evil people. But because of Jesus, he sees us as forgiven. He sees us as his redeemed people. He sees us by his grace and by his mercy. And through Christ's death on the cross, God truly loves us. He is the Lord of our salvation. The Lord who is always with us, always sustaining us. I don't know if you're aware of this, but for two weeks in this sanctuary, there was a small plastic container with a white lid. It sat in that windowsill right there. I don't know who put it there. I don't know who picked it up, but it was there for two weeks. How many of you knew it was there? 
I knew it was there because I walked by it one day. And only one of you knew it was there, but it was still there. In the same respect, how many of us realize and recognize the Lord of our salvation, the Lord of creation, the Lord who is to be feared, is with us constantly and always. We can't see him, but he's there. And he does more than just a container on a windowsill. He is the one who loves us. He is the one who gives us everything we need to support our lives. And he is especially the one who gives us spiritual life, who gives us forgiveness of our sins, eternal life. For him, he is the one who is our Lord, who gives us life. In Jesus' name.